This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So, why don't we get started with the 144 scale, real grade, RX-93 V2 High V Gundam. And without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another unique build from yours truly, Utaka Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome! So it has been quite some time since I built another real grade. I had an amazing time building the real grade Ava Unit Zero, followed by the real grade Zong a couple months back, but I have not really taken the time to build a real grade Gundam. So I did some digging, and shockingly enough, I found that Bendai was going to be releasing another amazing real grade this year, and thus, my dudes and dudes, we were going to be building the real grade RX-93 V2 High V Gundam. Gundam. Now, first glance, when I look at this box art, this guy is intimidating as hell. But at the same time, this mobile suit gives me absolutely jazz to get started on another real gray kit. As for the first side, the boxer get a nice tight shot of the face, followed by the updated funnel system for this particular mobile suit, followed by a unique shot of the mobile suit on its knee section, which means this mobile suit is packed to the brew with an amazing articulation, followed by a nice tight shot of the skirt, and at the same time, interchangeable plates and movable parts for the legs and skirt section, followed by another shot of this mobile suit being put in amazing dynamic poses, and at the same time, an abundancy of weapon accessories. So, enough about that, let's take a look what's inside the box. As always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual, looking absolutely intimidating as hell, but I love that little attention to detail, followed by the back of the instruction manual, give you a nice glimpse of what you can expect for sticker decals, which by the way, aren't that too difficult, but at the same time, it's really impressive what they were able to add to this small little model kit, followed by the first page, give you a nice glimpse of the inner frame itself, what tools you need, what kind of tweezers you need to actually equip when you're applying the sticker decals, followed by the next page, give you a nice shot on how the legs look when they're fully assembled. That's actually really impressive what they were able to do for something this small with a really complex inner frame, and I love that. Followed by the next page, give you a nice shot of many dynamic poses, which I absolutely love, followed by a nice glimpse of the weapon accessories, how to construct the head, and then followed by the last page is a nice shot of the weapon accessories and the funnel systems. Now, when it comes to these funnels, they do encourage you to actually buy the action base separately, but that is your choice. Although, I would really recommend you actually buy an action base for this model kit because it doesn't come with it. So, if you actually happen to have the Zong model kit that came out almost a year back, or if you just happen to come across it on Amazon for a reasonable price, you should get it. As for the final page, it gives you a nice complete diagram of where do you apply the sticker decals, and the very bottom is also another color guide if you choose to do some custom painting. Now, these sticker decals are actually very impressive from my perspective. You get a nice contrast of metallic silvers, coppers, and a little bit of gold here and there, and a nice metallic green for the camera module. Now, for me personally, I'm going to be rocking out with the true and fashion water slide decals for this particular build, and I believe you can find them on New Type HQ or in particular sellers on eBay. Now, let's talk about the runners. As for the first runners, you're going to get the classic Gundam blue pieces, which by the way, has a great deal of surface detail, which I absolutely find it fascinating, followed by these light purple runners, which will be great because they'll be contrast between the whites, the blues, and at the same time with these nice metallic gold pieces, followed by the head at the very top, and probably by far the only clear piece module that's going to be on this model kit, which is going to be the eyes. As for the next runners, you're going to get a handful of white runners, followed by a unique color scheme of the bean saber, and a long tube section that's going to be the fuel tanks for the backpack unit, followed by the funnels for this particular mold, so there is a great deal of surface detail and I love that. And last and finally we have the gray runners. Now these gray runners are pretty much going to be consist upon the weapon accessories, the inner frame and also everything in between. But the one thing that is absolutely incredible is the surface detail. This is something on par you expect from a master grade or even a perfect grade. And they were able to cram it into something this small is definitely really impressive. Good on you Bandai. So without further ado, let's jump into the world of this week. So, as always, before I get started building this model kit, I need to take a step back and evaluate which area I would love to tackle first. So, it would make sense to tackle the legs, feet, and arms first. Why? Because they actually contain the exact same runners for each individual section, so it creates less of a headache. As you can see here, I've already taken the liberty of cutting out each individual runner, but the one runner that's definitely going to be puzzling to me is going to be these metallic gold pieces. Well, slightly metallic, but they definitely have a great deal of surface detail, which I love, but I feel that a nice metallic copper or bronze will get the job done make it look really great, but if that doesn't work for for you, you can always go with a nice metallic gold.
Alright, now that I cleared a path to install the electrical wiring, it's now time to install the LED lights. So in the past, I would actually put an LED light on top of the actual thruster, but since I want to create less of a twinkling effect, I think it'll be more better to actually drill in a hole through and through, and then stick in a fiber optic wiring. This is actually going to make the light more consistent, at the same time, they look way more dynamic.
So for this process, it's gonna be exactly the same like how I did the legs. I'm gonna be drilling a hole through and through through the boosters, while at the same time, make sure there's a great deal of cavity space to hide all the electrical wiring so I can funnel it inside the main body.
Okay, so for this next part, this can be incredibly stressful, but at the same time can be incredibly challenging. What I mean by that is you're taking all that electrical wire from the legs and then bringing it up to the torso. Now, as incredibly detailed that torso is, there is barely, barely any cavity space in there to hide all electrical wiring. So a great deal of the hiding the wiring is gonna be stuck between the main abdomen and just enough in the main cavity space to bring it from the backpack unit to the main head. Now the head itself is gonna be probably by far the hardest part of this model kit because my original plan was to install two LED lights, one for the camera and one for the eyes. And after giving it much thought, it would make sense to actually install two Pico LED lights for the eyes and one green for the head. But there is a big issue. Since these plastic pieces are very close to one another, they need to be separated. So to make this effect work, I'm actually gonna to need to separate the camera module clear piece as well as the eye piece into individual pieces. As you can see here, it's actually gonna be very difficult, but at the same time with a good pair of snippers, it shouldn't be that hard at all. But probably by far the most challenging part on this model kit is actually gonna be blocking out the eyes. So that way you can actually have a great deal of creating less light bleeding. Now, before I get into that, we need to actually cut this area out very finely so that way it doesn't create any issues when it comes to light bleeding between the greens and yellows. At the same time, the white runners are going to need to be painted black on the inside. And the reason for that is if you just put a very bright LED light in there, the green is going to go translucent through the white and the yellow is going to go translucent through the other white areas. So it would make sense to actually hit this area with either a black primer or a flat black just to create just enough light blocking in there to create that less ghosting effect. This can be done with a fine tip brush, but I would really recommend you use an airbrush or an aerosol can when doing this method. All right, now that these white runners are done, it's now time to tackle the clear runners. Now to make sure this works great, like I mentioned before earlier on this video, we're gonna need to separate these two. So you can use either a marker or perhaps like myself, I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade just to create a nice little groove in there so that way it creates less friction between the plastic from cracking or chipping so that way everything is like clean and consistent. And then once I get it just right, I'm gonna take these two apart and then actually hit up with black primer. Now the eyes itself, like I mentioned before, are gonna be proven to be a challenge. Fortunately enough for us, we have these spare copper eye pieces. So what I'm gonna basically do is take these eye pieces, put them on over top of the eyes that are there, and that is gonna be our masking area. Fantastic idea, works like a charm every time.
right, my dudes, and do that. As this video is wrapping up, I want to share to my thoughts and impressions about this build. And first impressions when I first heard about this kit being unveiled was, holy crap, we got another incredible real great coming in. It won't arrive until 10 months later, and I do hope it's definitely worth the wait. And my goodness, it was worth it. The inner frame itself is absolutely beautiful and breathtaking, my dudes. It's really incredible what they were able to pull off for something this small, this compact, into something this incredible. It's on the same caliber as a master grade, but just a little bit of a perfect grade finesse to it with less of the gimmicks. It's just wonderful, and I just absolutely find that incredible what they were able to do with something this small. Now, keep in mind, I was once again extremely hesitant to build another real grade because I was going through my honeymoon period, okay? I didn't think that building the real grade Evangelion, then the real grade Zong, would lived up to me building another real grade down the road because there hasn't been anything that's really beaten it. Now I am well aware that there is a real grade new and a real grade Sazvi, but here's the thing, I already built the master grade versions of those, so there's really no point in retreading building those kits again and then have a, a lackluster experience building two different types. And, and I get it, and I know you guys were asking me to build it, but for me to get into building a real great, it has to be something that I've either seen or haven't seen, but I've had an interest in wanting to build it, but I'm not sure if I'm up to building quite just yet. And the wonderful thing about the real grades, it's a completely new take for anyone's perspective, whether they are new, they are casual, they are pros, they're jumping to something that is new and at the same time really exciting. And I absolutely had a blast working on each individual weapon accessories, whether it was the funnels or working with the three different tones of light purples, dark blues, and whites. It's an absolutely wonderful color scheme and it actually breaks you out of your comfort zone of working with different other colors for unique model kits. Now, there is one concerning area when it comes to this model kit. For starters, if you're going to do custom painting, be prepared to get some paint scraping because as you can see here on the tricep, there is a great deal of surface scraping underneath there and that has something to do with the impact in between the, the shoulder blades and at the same time the forearms and the tricep and bicep. Another thing that's kind of a dick move from Bendai is the fact that it does not come with an action base. The Zong came with an action base, but this one didn't. And it kind of defeats the purpose of putting this guy in aerial dynamic poses. So when that time comes and you have some spare cash, please do yourself a favor, buy an action base for the small kid because I can tell you right now, you are missing out on such incredible dynamic poses that are definitely going to be limited by just keeping it static. Now I know the burning question that I know you dudes and dudes are asking yourself, is this kit worth the purchase? And I am more than happy to tell you dudes, it is absolutely a must buy. It is a fun kit, it educates you, it excites you every time when you want to build another section onto it. It is an absolute must buy. Would highly recommend to build it if you are a fan of a real great kit. And with that being said, thank you dudes and dudes for taking your time to watch this video. And if you could do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, it helps the channel tremendously. And as always, I will see you dudes and dudes on the next build. Overgrown under the tallest trees is where I always felt protected. With a branch in hand, and you next to me, do what we manifest. I call for you now in the forest around, when the whole world is falling apart. The truth almost found for the sun. Night.